monsters. I'll pull playing a, a deck very similar to the one that I wrote about and Kent Ketter top aided with last week. Uh, I think just a few cosmetic changes. I think he cut Gruel Charm in order to play another uh, ultimate price and Golgari Charm. I think that's it. That feels like an upgrade. Look, Gruel Charm has its purposes, man. You need a little help against Mono Blue. It's not splashy. I'm not even sure if it's particularly good, but it gets the job done. I would just want to have a lot of ultimate prices in this list. That's that understandable. Feels, that feels like the strongest incentive to go down this road. Ultimate price is very good against green red monsters. It kills Master of Waves, which is one of the better cards against you. I would not want to leave home without at least three copies of this in my 75. As far as uh, this final Black Devotion deck list here from Simon, uh, nothing crazy going on here. He's starting a couple Lifebane Zombies. He's only got two. He's got three Pack Rats, fourth one on the sideboard, additional copy of Lifebane Zombie in the sideboard. So you see that change starting to, make, starting to take place. Again, uh, not too surprised to see you know, Joe Bernal make the drastic change of just four of this and cut the Pack Rats because that's just kind of what he's known to do. But it's starting to look like people are starting to move Lifebane Zombies slowly but surely into main decks. There's no way you can look at the metagame over the last couple of weeks and feel like you can show up with your Black Devotion list from two months ago. Yeah. The, the metagame's too different at this point. Justin Uppel on your left, he is uh, what we like to call the young, mas young master, excuse me, perhaps the future of American magic, as the old joke goes. Uh, sitting in at a cool 16 years of age with multiple open series top eights, um, plays a lot of magic online. Yes. He is uh, Jay Uppel of Magic Online. He's going to take a mulligan here. Uh, very skilled for his age. And he is starting off this tournament 3-0 so far. So we'll see if he's able to win game number three here between him and Cedric Simon. Should be fun to watch. So what's your take on this matchup? Uh, matchup? I'm sure you're fairly experienced playing it. So close. Um, I know that when I play, when I play Magic Online, I keep notes in a spreadsheet uh, of my matches, and what I've played against, and things of that nature, just for, you know, maybe a more numbers approach. So I'm trying to be unbiased about my results. Um, mono Black is as close as I've gotten to even as it comes. Um, sometimes I've been completely destroyed. Other times I've completely destroyed them. And I've also played some close ones that have been drawn out in top decks. So I, I feel like, you know, it's been around 50-50. Uh, it, the games go back and forth and they hinge on a lot of different things. I imagine Reaper of the Wilds is pretty good against them. They don't have, you know, Doomblade doesn't kill, Ultimate Price doesn't kill it. You can play it with Hexproof Mana up potentially to cover it against Hero's Downfall. That feels like a threat if the game goes long enough that can steal games who would otherwise be losing. It certainly can. Um, you know, one of the problems I've had with Reaper of the Wilds over time is that, you know, a lot of the times when I first started playing against Mono Black, my plan was, all right, I'm going to play this when I have six mana, and then I'll have two for, for Hexproof and they can't kill it, and yeah, then I'm going to win. The problem with that plan, and this happens probably a lot when you play against Mono Black for you guys at home, is that when you sandbag a threat, they draw a discard spell, you want to jump off a bridge. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot, especially when they're boarding in the Life Bane Zombie. They're actually boarding into some number of Thought Seasons, which is likely four, some number of Life Bane Zombies, that number varies between two and four. And even though Reaper of the Wilds can't be taken via Duress, you know, Duress is certainly a good card to actually board in against you because you have Dreadboard, because you have Planeswalkers, uh, things of that nature. So it's actually really difficult to sandbag a threat. And as a result, Reaper of the Wilds, a lot of times you just say, all right, play it, hope they don't have the appropriate answer right now, and then I'll get to untap with it with Hexproof and make that play. Yeah. Reaper of the Wild is one of those weird, it's both a black creature and a gold creature, so a lot of their conventional removal doesn't yep. line up against it. And of course, Bioblight's not going to get the job done, and, you know, if things are going appropriately, Devour Flesh probably won't get it done either. But, you know, they do have four heroes downfalls, as Simon's going to start off with a Temple of Deceit and pass the turn back. So they do have plenty of answers, as Uppel draws a pull of Kronos for the turn, and we'll see what he wants to start off with. The very methodical youngster. Going to play a stomping ground on tap. There's your Elvish Mystic. He's going to go to 18 and pass it back. So a little bit of acceleration here. And appears Justin does have Domri in his hand, so he can get one of the explosive green-red starts of the format, which is a second turn Domri. Let's see what Simon has here. It looks like maybe a Bile Blight to take care of the Mystic. Really good play there. Do not want to leave the mana acceleration out there. And Bile Blight doesn't have a ton of targets in the deck, but Elvish Mystic is certainly one of them, and that's a very good target. Yeah, actually, somewhat surprising to see Bioblight's still in the deck in, in game three here. As as you mentioned, there's just not a lot of targets in Jun Monsters for that removal spell. But Elvis Mystic is as good as it gets there. Down to 16 goes Upal via Blood Crypt. Here's the scavenging use before passing the turn back. And I believe if I caught Simon's hand correctly, he does have a Life Bane Zombie in his hand. So that might be a uh, time for a little two for one from the three one. And it is. So there's the grip. You see an ultimate price of Storm Breath Dragon, Domri, and Polychronos. The Hydra is going to go bye bye. A decent hand. Yeah, Rumble. the problem is the Storm Breath Dragon is likely not to matter for very long, uh, for, not for uh, a while here. And 
Justin needs to be the beatdown deck, so having a removal spell in his hand isn't necessarily great. Drawing a third land for, for Domri, of course, very valuable. It can help him recoup these mulligans and discard spells. Upple offers up the trade with Scavenging Ooze. Simon declines. So he's going to take two. He's going to go down to 14. And it looks like Justin's going to drop the old Domri down here. So, of course, that's going to have to tick up. I don't think we're going to see a fight. I suppose I could be wrong. But it will go up to four. There's a miss and pass the turn back. And don't ignore these these Ravnica dual lands that Justin's playing untapped here. That's, that's the third one. With Great Merchant of Asphodel, uh, the Mono Black deck can actually go into this beat down and burn you out mode. And those those six points of damage definitely matter. It's a very very big deal. You know, part of the part of the ability to splash is the fact that you have to obviously play some Ravnica dual lands as you mentioned. See, Domri's going to miss this turn. Looks like we're going to see the ultimate price here from Upple take care of the Desecration Demon. Scavenging is going to go active. It's going to gain up a little life. It's going to go up to 15. And then attack here for three. Going to put Simon down to 15. As I think that's going to complete it for the youngster's turn. Pass it back to Simon. Really interested to see if Cedric has a removal spell for this, for the Scavenging Ooze, because there's a lot of creatures in the graveyard at this point. Yeah. It looks like his, it looks like his hand right now is just two lands and the Grey Merchant. So I think the answer to your question might be no, as here's a drain for four from Grey Merchant. Simon's going to go up to 19, Upple's going to go down to 11. But Scavenging Ooze could start to run rampant on this battlefield. Let's see what Upple finds this time. He's missed off of two Domri hits and has not made a fourth land drop, so it probably means additional copies of Domri yeah. or removal spells, potentially. Also, lands could obviously be hiding up, hiding out on top of there as Upple's going to up his scavenging ooze, turn into a 4-4, gain a little bit of life. That is an untapped land. It's going to go down to 10. There's a Domri. Here's a fight. And there goes life being zombie. And now we might see the ooze play a little bit of defense. Try to protect his Domri for one more turn. Remember, Justin doesn't have Storm Breath Dragon in hand, so there's a thought. He's not anymore. He doesn't. Let's play off the top of the deck, shall we? Yep. But Justin's starting with a pretty big edge in the top deck and we're here with Domri and a large scavenging goose. He misses with Domri yet again. What's this spell going to be? Looks like it's a spell. Simon again, just a land in his hand. Here comes Upple. He says, all right, let's remove some cards here. Turn my ooze into a 6-6, six, six, get myself two life back. It looks like Upple has a Sylvan Grid. That's a good defender. So pass it back. Simon draws a card. What's he find? He's been drawing a lot of lands. He found a nice one in Desecration Demon. Now this is interesting because there is, I believe, another creature in the graveyard for Upple, that Storm yeah. Breath Dragon. So that means we could actually see Scavenging was turned into a 7-7. Seven, seven. Upple would have to lose his Domri to do so, but I think that uh, I think that exchange is worth it. Yeah, you, you have to feel like you're a, a pretty big edge here. You know, there is the risk that Cedric has some sort of removal spell in his hand here at instant speed, but the evidence doesn't really support that, that Ooze has been playing for a long time now, so. Upple says up on the Domri. Declines to make his captain a little bit bigger and fight. He's going to take two. He's going to go down to 10. Here comes the Reaper. He's able to leave Hexproof open. And then he passes the turn back, I think, with the intentions of sacrificing the Sylvan Curia to this turn of Desecration Demon. We'll see as it looks like a Pithing Needle has been drawn. So that's going to come down. What is he going to name here? That's really interesting. I would assume it's Domri. And he does go with Domri. You're correct. So we do have confirmation on that. And now Karyatid's going to get sacrificed, which is going to allow two things here. Number one, of course, is the Scry Trigger for Reaper of the Wilds, which Upple immediately keeps on top. But that's even a little more, a little more fuel, excuse me, for the scavenging use. Yep. And then Cedric can't find a removal spell fast. The Zeus is just going to the Zeus is just going to bury him. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at a lethal attack this yeah. turn. Who's, of course, being a 7 7, Reaper being a 4 5. Quick math, that makes it 11. And if Upple has a removal spell on top of his deck, that would be game over. Now, he doesn't know that. But again, the evidence is starting to mount. You know, he didn't do anything last turn. He drew and cast a, a Pithy Needle, so that was likely his draw step mm -hmm. last turn. The, the odds are very high that it's just a land in his hand. Grey Merchant's on blocking duty. You got a Scry Trigger here from the Reaper. Upple takes a look at that top card. I'm going to analyze the board before deciding to keep it on top. The follow-up is Polychronos. You call it monsters for a reason. There's three of them out there. I see Desecration Demon is a 7-7 right now. And if you're up, Bull, 
I don't think you have to sacrifice the desecration demon. I think you do because there's a if he draws Grey Merchant, it's lethal. So he takes the hit. He would go. He, so he can he can use scavenging use to oh, go up to twelve. Sure. Yeah. So that I think that's the only reason. That's going to be it actually. So Justin Upple is going to win this match over Cedric Simon. Two games to one. Judd Monsters was on to 4-0, and unfortunately for Simon, moving in the mid to late game there, he just didn't try.